What's going on boys and girls? Shine Obsessed here again. Uh, I wanted to bring you guys in on a little project that I'm doing. Not necessarily a project, but something I noticed on my one of my personal vehicles. Um, I got a scratch. It's typical, right? You got kids, they get in and out of the car with their backpacks, and this is primarily the side of the car that my son gets into. Um, more than likely it was a zipper on the jacket or his backpack or something like that that caused the scratch bring you guys in here hopefully you can see it it's about right here I'm gonna shine my light in here so you can see it and highlight it uh, there it is there decent scratch we're gonna be fixing this real time and I wanted to show you guys what you can do with polishes and compounds that you can buy at any hardware store and a low-end very inexpensive polisher you can get from Harbor Freight. It's the DA, pretty well known by uh, detailers and hobbyists alike, but it does really good work. You don't need to go out and buy expensive polishers, expensive polishes. There's a lot of boutique polishes that cost twice as much as what you can get at your, Har at your AutoZone or your Pet Boys, but you can do really great work and maintain your vehicles and get rid of naggy little scratches like this with simple tools, and inexpensive um, equipment and polishes. So I'm gonna get into it real quick. I'm gonna use my handy dandy Harbor Freight DA that I have. Now again, I can knock this out pretty quickly with one of my better machines, one of my bigger machines uh, and some of the other, my go-to uh, polishes and pads and things of that nature. But I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to do something like this that even the hobbyist can do it. Even someone who's inexperienced, it's not hard. It doesn't require require products that you can't find anywhere, uh, with the exception of pads, good pads, because places like Harbor Freight and Pet Boys don't sell good pads for polishers. Uh, but they do, they sell polishes and compounds that are adequate to get the job done. And like I said, the Harbor Freight DA, most of the time you can get it for 40 or 50 bucks and you catch a Harbor Freight on the right day, you can get about 20% off. So let's get into it. All right, we're gonna show you how I typically attack it. This is a pretty good scratch. I can feel it with my, you know, with my, uh, without my gloves on, my bare hand, I can just catch it with my nail. So it's pretty deep. So I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is compound it. Um, when you attack a scratch or a scuff, you wanna go with, the least aggressive uh, approach first to get to get you the best results. Uh, you don't want to go too too ham on it, um, to, you know. In the event that you could cause more damage than you've already uh, that's already there. But the least aggressive uh, approach to get you the best results is how you should do it. Uh, again, remember when you're compounding or polishing, you're basically removing clear coat from the panel. So the less you remove, the better. That's why the least aggressive to get the best results approach is always best. Now, I've dealt with this kind of scratch before. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna go straight to a compound and a microfiber cutting pad. Again, these kind of pads you cannot find at your local auto store, but you can order them from other places like Auto Geek or, or um, Detailer's Domain or any other detail and specialty store. So we're gonna knock this out with my handy Harbor Freight DA. Uh, I've converted this to a three inch. It comes with a six inch backing plate, so six inch pads, but I have uh, other machines that I do the bulk of my work with. Bring in here. There is my Rupes 21 ES, my my old trusted friend, I've had that for several years, and, and uh, he and I have been through a lot of battles together. This is my newer machine, my Rupes Milli, my gear driven machine. I'll do probably another video on that later and uh, using that and how well it works. But for today, we're focusing on the low budget equipment. And we're gonna knock this scratch out. All right, so I'm gonna go in at a medium speed. Don't need too much speed. I won't get into speed and all the uh, minutia of how you should attack it. I just want to show you the results you can get from, a, from a, a tool like this and products like this. We're starting with the Harbor Freight. 
a microfiber cutting pad, and some Meguiar's Ultimate Compound can be found at any uh, of your auto parts stores, even Walmart. So let's get into this. I will probably check the sound and go to some music while I do this. All right, folks, as you can see, that scratch still remains. So, the ultimate compound with the microfiber cutting pad just wasn't quite aggressive enough. So we're gonna have to step it up. And I think what I'm going to do is just do a light wet sand. Um, I don't have any 3000 grit, but I have some 2000. I don't recommend going that aggressive. I don't even recommend you guys doing it at home, but you can, it's not, the worst thing if you've got some experience with the polisher and the compound and the polish um, there's really nothing to it uh, or removing sanding marks um, but if you're a novice you may want to practice on uh, an old panel go get an old hood from the junkyard or something like that um, so gonna get into it gonna do a quick go over this with a little wet sand and see what we can do Now you might be asking why I'm doing this with the door open. Um, sometimes when you're using aggressive um, pads, I'm using a dual action polisher, that the backing plate tends to, it. what it does is it rotates, it spins, and then it oscillates. And there's about eight millimeters from the center of the polisher that that pad and that backing plate spins out. So if I'm trying to correct this door when it's closed, I've got an adjacent panel right here. Uh, now, while this car is a, a BMW, so the panel gaps are pretty consistent and, um, between the rear quarter and the door is pretty level, probably wouldn't be that much of an issue. Um, but on some cars, panel gaps are not even. You know, that, that rear quarter could stick out some and where that backing plate spins around and it knocks against there, you could, and, and typically edges and along body lines are fairly thin on most finishes. So that backing plate spinning and knocking against that edge of that body line, you could potentially uh, burn through the paint or clear coat there. So you have to be careful. So that's why I'm doing it with the door open. All right. Now we're gonna to have to go back in there. I'm gonna clean my pad out. I'm gonna to have to go back in there with the compound to remove the sanding marks. And what we should see, hopefully, is we don't need much for an area this size. I taped it off because this panel is coated with uh, XO V4, 
Uh, just doing testing on my car as a test bit. I've got different coatings on almost every panel, so uh, we don't have uh, the same thing all over the whole car. But I wanted to know where I need to reapply coating to. So after I do this, I'm gonna, after I repair this scratch, I'm gonna reapply coating in just this area. I don't have to do the entire door or anything like that. So just so you guys know. All right, let's get in it. Sandy marks not quite gone. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit more speed, a little bit more pressure. Let's see. no longer exists nor do the sanding marks I see a little bit of sanding marks there I got a little bit of when you go that aggressive with a polish and that aggressive a pad microfiber what you're going to typically do is cause some minor defects you'll get some hazing because uh, you're cutting pretty hard with a, a pad like that and a compound now McGuire's ultimate compound is pretty user friendly uh, it, it's it's their consumer grade uh, compound, so it's not super super aggressive, but paired with a microfiber cutting pad, you could cause some defects. Not to mention this BMW paint uh, and metallic. Typically, BMW metallic paint is pretty hard, so you have to go at it pretty hard to cause marring. I'm going to follow it up with polish anyway, just to get the best finished I can. So we're going to hit it with some um, Meguiar's Ultimate Polish. We're going to be using a white, Lake Country white foam. Light cutting pad. is gone there's a very light sanding mark I can see but nothing on that you'd have to use a inspection light to see it I'm not gonna 
stress about it. I got the scratch out. And I don't like working close to edges. Again, you can easily burn through paint on edges because there's less paint on edges like this and body lines. Now I could have put a strip of tape here just to protect it, but you know, this car isn't brand new. I just wanted to get this, show you guys how to get this, how easily uh, scratches like this can be uh, repaired. It didn't require me going to the body shop. Just a simple $50 Harbor Freight uh, dual action polisher. Uh, some Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. Meguiar's Ultimate Polish. In this case, I had to break out the sandpaper. I didn't probably didn't need to go to 2000 grit. I could have probably could have done it with 3000 grit. But I just wanted to show you guys what's possible with simple tools, inexpensive tools, and inexpensive products that you can find just about anywhere. With the exception of the pads, uh, all of this stuff can be had at your local uh, Harbor Freight and or Walmart or AutoZone. So you don't have to get these big expensive polishers. I know I've got, you've seen my group heads, I've got a few hundred dollars in polishers here with me and I don't even, I'm embarrassed to tell you how much uh, product I've gotten because I've experimented with so many different polishes. You just do it till you find your go-to, but these two, as you can see, get the job done and uh, with really good results. I'm going to wrap this video up right now. Pretty much done. I'm going to finish this off, get it coated, we're good to go, and see you guys in the next one.